Hey guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Crimson Company. Crimson Company is for two players, takes about 40 minutes to play, and it's for ages 13 and up. In the game you play against or as two rivaling swordsmen are trying to control the lands. And you're going to be hiring sell swords, shady merchants, and uh, devious or evil monsters to be competing against each other for these lands. It's only two players, and by that I mean you're going to have three separate areas in which you can play down your monsters, but first you're going to be bidding on them. You'll be bidding on them to select the right ones you need for the right spaces, and if by the time the land is ready to score or to be conquered, whoever has the most points on their side of the field is going to take over that territory. The player or swordsman to gather two territories of the three will be the winner. All right, let's go down and take a look at Crimson Company by Crimson Company. So here we have all the components of the game Crimson Company, everything inside of the box here, along with, of course, the rule book. There are two separate types of cards. You're going to get the three basic area cards, and they just have three different colors. They're blue, orange, and green, along with the entire deck of character cards. This deck is going to have the cell swords, the merchants, the uh, monsters, and all sorts of different mythical creatures that you're going to be able to bid on and then be able to purchase and place down on the board here. In a two-player game, you're going to be sitting down with one player on one side and one on the other. The first player will get three coins and the second player will get four coins and then you're simply going to be taking these cards here which are your player reference cards and it will tell you how the game goes. Uh, after you go back and forth until two people have won two territories you're going to win the game everything including. Now let's go ahead and check it down below and we'll show you how to play a round or two. Okay, so here's Crimson Company, and it's set up for two players, as you can see. You've got the three areas here. There's four guys to start off, and then, of course, there's a deck of cards, and it will remain face up on this side here. You can't purchase from here unless there's a card that says otherwise that is in play. To begin the game, the first player has got his three coins, and you're going to go to the income phase. You'll be drawing three coins from the income phase, adding it to your pool, and then bidding on any of the four available characters over here. If you bid uh, on a character, your opponent will have two options. Options. They can choose to either match or they can choose to pass. If they match coins with you, they'll get to take the card, but they're going to give you the currency in exchange. However, if they choose to not uh, match the currency, your currency will be discarded and you're going to get this card, which you'll be able to place into the recruitment phase. In the recruitment phase, you will then go to be moving on next, is you'll be placing in one of these three areas on your side of the board. Uh, these characters each have a power and they also have an ability as well as their character name. The power is just how much they are valued at and after this little area here scores, whoever has the most power on either side is going to take control of this area. Uh, this here says each player flips one of their cards in this lane. So in this case there's no cards in the lane other than this one itself. He would flip that and if there was a character card on this side he would flip that one as well. Uh, you don't want to flip cards over because when you do it's going to cost you points putting you at, uh, putting them at zero and zero is not any strength So make sure you choose your cards wisely There are other cards that are going to do different things like this one says flip all of your other cards in this lane Which is pretty good So if he played his three on this one and one he would take this one here That's really good then after you move on to uh, the recruit then you do your deployment Then you're going to move on to scoring a lane if needed the way you score lanes is pretty simple if there is four units on either of the areas on either side of these three location cards, the area will score. All you're going to do is add up the total amount of points in that area, and the person who has the most will take control of that area, removing all cards in that area from the game. If there's nobody scoring, the next player is going to go ahead and then begin their turn by selecting their income and then betting on one of these four cards here. And the game will continue going on until somebody scores one, two lanes are out of the three and wins the game. Uh, there are some little extra caveats, which I'll explain above, with along with my review of the game Crimson Company. All right, let's come up. Crimson Company has a couple few caveats to explain, as well as some interesting mechanics. And the first one being that you can flip your cards face down, yours and your opponent's, and when you do so, they're still cards, and they're just worth zero power. Zero power is not going to give you the ability to take over the lane, because you're going to need at least one to do so. However, being able to flip them down and then flip them back up again will give you their, uh, their power reoccurring. For instance, there are certain cards in the game that are going to say stuff like gain coins equal to the strength of one of your 
your cards, then destroy it. So that's something simply that will just take effect when you play it, removing that card from the game and you gaining coins, which is gonna help you in the bidding process. Others are gonna say stuff like score, a gain two strength for each of your face down cards in this lane. So having face down cards now becomes worthwhile because they're now worth, uh, two strength. That's pretty useful. Uh, uh, another card here says each player flips one of their cards in this lane. So that is going to allow every player to be flipping their cards face up, face down, changing the way you do things, allowing you to take those instant effects. And then uh, most of them will just have say something like recruitment. Your opponent has to pay you one more coin as opposed to matching. They have to pay you one additional in order to take the card that they need. Uh, all in all, though, it's a pretty simple game. You're having a little bit of area control, a little bit of bidding, and a lot of deciding how you want to place the cards and where you want to place the cards in order to make their use of abilities as most as beneficial as possible. The game has some great artwork. I really enjoyed the artwork of the game, and every single one of the cards in the game is unique, which is really cool as well. There's no single ability that is uh, duplicated in the deck. And I don't think you need much more, but in a Kickstarter campaign, they might include some additional ones, and additional ones are always welcome. Uh, it's a two-player game. I'd like to see this played at three or four players as well, if that would be a way to do it. I like these kind of bidding games and these back-and-forth games. It was a lot of fun for me playing this game as a two-player game, but if I could get more players, I'd definitely like it. Overall, it's a very, very good game. I enjoy the styles of bidding and I enjoy the styles of area control. If you like those type of games into a two-player style game, you're going to like this one as well. In addition, there is a pile of coins and then once you run out, you have to start utilizing them in order to win because you'll notice that uh, the four is how it's going to score. And there's so many possible combinations in this game, bringing it together with this interesting mechanic of flipping cards face up and face down. I think you're going to dig this game if you like those mechanics. Uh, for people who don't like the style of area control or the auctioneering based two player game mechanism, maybe you might not like that as much, maybe you'd be looking more for a competitive uh, multiplayer game. But uh, for those of you that are uh, into two player bidding games, this is one I would definitely suggest checking out. Crimson Company, a really worthwhile game, down below on Kickstarter now. Thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video, go ahead and check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. It all does help. We do greatly appreciate it, as well as checking out unfilteredgamer.com. Tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. It's all there for you, and we're giving away four games right now that you should go ahead and check out, as well as taking a look at everythingboardgames.com and The Giveaway Geek, two great giveaway sites that are giving away even more stuff than my own, and we're all working together to give away the game Wingspan right now. All right, guys, that's all I got for you. Other than this quick, simple poll, if you want to go ahead and check it below, there's a poll that I want to know. Do you like the new setup better, the old one, neither, both? What do you think? Let me know. I'd really greatly appreciate you just clicking that button and letting me go. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to uh, Crimson joining the Crimson Company with you next time. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs>